Welcome back. You're watching and listening to Breakfast with Anne and Martin. Let's take a look now at today's newspapers. Can you believe this? The Mail on Sunday has a picture of traffic chaos <laughs> as holidaymakers were stuck for up to four hours in Dover. Yeah, same old Britain. And inside the Sunday Telegraph, there's a picture of the first official memorial statue of our late Queen. It stands seven foot tall and features one of her beloved corgis. Do you think there's a likeness? Can't really quite tell from that, but no. I hope so. Uh, Sunday Telegraph is leading with the controversial anti-car schemes, with the Prime Minister saying he is on the motorists' side. Uh, let's see if we believe that. The front page of the Mail on Sunday leads with the Big Brother story entry system into the EU, meaning every Briton will be fingerprinted before entering Europe. And the Sunday Times uh, says our Prime Minister is planning to pour millions into North Sea oil. And the Observer leads with the hidden delays behind care for cancer patients. Sunday Mirror reveals outrage over Rishi Sunak borrowing a helicopter to travel 200 miles as the world roasts in a climate crisis. He should have gone on a bike. Yeah. There you go. One rule for him, one rule for us. Well, joining us now to go through the papers inside is a writer and journalist, Emma Wolfe, and, of course, the broadcasting legend, Peter Price. Good morning to both of you. Shall we start with you, Emma? Um, so, the front of the Express is households to face, once again, the pain of soaring energy bills this winter. Absolutely. We're hardly even through summer. Not that it's been much of a summer that's far, oh, but no. anyway, here we go. It's summer started. And there's been a few signs that inflation mm, may be levelling out. I don't really think so, but anyway. But there's more bad news for gas and electricity consumers, i.e. all of us. Um, we are not prepared for this winter. If it's a cold winter, we are simply not prepared. Energy experts are saying... We haven't sorted out our storage problems. We haven't got our production supply under control. We're still absolutely at the mercy of wholesale prices from abroad. We're still um, having, going to have to import all of our, pretty much all of our gas and electricity. The whole thing is an absolute mess. Millions will be left unable to pay their bills and... Are the government going to help out? Are they not? It's really bad. I must say, yes, uh, given the, uh, the amount of time we spent talking about mm. the problem as we were coming out of winter, you would have expected certain things to have been lined up and done to prevent it being so awful the next winter, but nothing appears to It's not to a new problem. At all. No. We have been talking about it, as you say. We've but got... it's also been a problem that's been happening for years yeah. and years and years. Yeah. And years and years. As long as I've been born, I'm so pleased to be back. Oh, it's so I'm lovely so to see you back. Pleased to be back. Lovely lady at the end. <laughs> You two Brilliant. in the middle, <laughs> and me in my seat. I've Awful seat still. I've missed you. Awful <laughs> seat. Yeah. And I've no, missed you. Sorry all... about that. No, just... we're all thrilled to have him back, though, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let's, let's look at what you've been looking at. Him. That's Rishi Sunak saying that he is on the motorist's side. Mm. Now, what's he really saying? Well, he is saying that, but what, what is, is interesting, uh, Rishi, uh, Rishi, 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 I beg your pardon, has Rishi promised Rishi. Uh, drivers that Rishi. he is on their side of this controversial anti-car scheme. He's also saying that um, it depends on the cars and the anti... The, the, the situation is that these people need their cars. It's going to hit working-class people. It's going to hit the uh, white van drivers. It's going to be all over the country. And he... Yes, I mean, a lot of people yep. say, well, this is just a yep. London it's problem. Not. No, 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 moment, it's all over. At yeah, the no, moment, it all is... Over. You know, yeah. we're, thinking, we're t thinking about London, yeah. particularly the effect it had on the by-election yeah. in Uxbridge, yeah. um, which the Tories expected to lose. Everybody expected them to lose, but once they were talking about you, Les, it changed. And this is going to happen in the end all over the country. Yeah, but the Prime Minister is also saying, which is a really good point, people haven't got the choice to, you know, they, they should have the choice to move, mm. which I think is a really interesting point. If that's going to be the problem, and they have got an old car, and it's going to cost them a lot of money. We've been in a pandemic. People are still trying to get themselves together, and it's to save the pollution in the air, which goes into the air, maybe all this energy should be put into China to ask them to start not polluting. Well, and the, and, 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 the America, and the Americans with the coal that's being dug up again. Mm. That's what upsets me. But it is hitting the working class of people. Of course it is. It's hitting cabbies. It's hitting people who can't afford to replace, yeah. replace their cars. And we don't necessarily want people replacing cars that are perfectly serviceable. I don't want millions of cars being chucked out in this country because they don't meet the... But we do the want breathable or... air in our city. Of course we do. Yeah, but, of course we do. But, but until the alternatives are in place, 
it is not possible. But until this, this is not just a London thing. It's not you're just a absolutely thing. right. It's, it's, al the it's, al it's, on, it's already in Birmingham. It's already in Newcastle. It's already in Norwich. It's already in Oxford. They tried it in Liverpool. They tried it in Nottingham. It's in Bradford. It will go nationwide. Angela Rayner said last Sunday this will go nationwide if Labour get in. The point is, Emma. Are the Tories actually going to do something about this? Are they actually going to say, we're against this, or are they going to do this thing? We're, we're going to review it. Yeah, we're going to I know what that it. means. It means we'll talk about it and then ignore it after the but election. Even Labour are they actually going to do it? Exactly, exactly. At the moment, this headline to me seems, Rishi, seems like Rishi Sunak realising that most people are motorists in this country, mm. sitting on the fence, saying, oh, you know, it's not a war on drivers. But neither party, I don't think, are coming out clearly mm on one side or the other. Even Keir Starmer has failed to row in behind mm -hmm. Sadiq Khan, his out-of-control mayor of London, with his ULEZ madness. And the thing about ULEZ, I'm a, I'm a cyclist, I'm not a driver, but the thing about ULEZ and low-traffic neighbourhoods is they don't do the job. Oh. They divert traffic around. Where I live, in central London, you have this terrible rat run of people driving around and around, increasing pollution, congestion, mm -hmm. traffic... And journey because, lengths. And Can journey I ask length, also... Absolutely. Yeah. Where because does, they can't get to where yeah. they need to go. Where does the money go? The, the collections <laughs> of money. Where does that go? Straight into the coffers of City Hall. Yeah. And where does it get spent? Yeah. Well, we don't know. It, that's what it is. I believe it's, it's a tax. It's a tax. It is a tax. It's as salvation. Ended. But we need some political clarity. If if clarity. the Tories are actually going to say we're against it, then, then stand against yeah. it and give voters a choice. Yeah. yeah. Surely that's what this yeah. should be about. I don't know. I mean, I I understand where Sadiq Khan is coming from as well in London. Um, he's written a book about um, how to, you know, the, about pollution and the way it affects of us, course. our health. Um, we do need to think seriously about the pollution in our cities. We do, but we it's want not to bring working. up our children in breathable air. It's not working. Yeah. I'm cycling around with a three-year-old on the back of my bike through central London. It's absolutely traffic choked. Ulez yeah. and low traffic neighbourhoods, and they're not working. I agree with you. Of course, yeah. we want breathable air. The quality air. of there is better. Yeah. Isn't it? Am I, well, am I right? right no, that we've been told yeah, that we're not that, that, that I've noticed, book. and I've yeah, lived yeah. here for. Am I right in decades? assuming too that older cars don't have to pay road tax? W where's the uh, analogy in that? Yeah, that's the classic. So, yeah. Yeah, the oh, classic you mean cars. very old. The classic yeah, cars, like so all of us... Yeah, but my car's coming towards an older car um, and it's going to be um, uh, uh, road tax-free. So that... It's, it's the lack against... of joined-up thinking, yeah. I think. Yes, I mean, Emma, I... you're right, you're making that point, that it's actually not stopping congestion. It's not instance. stopping congestion, but also I object to people like Pete who have cars that are perfectly serviceable, who aren't, you know, gul uh, belching no. out black clouds of smoke that we have seen from some vans and, you know, lorries and things like that. I mean, what are they doing going through central London? But anyway, I don't well, want people delivering like stuff while people sit at home. We can't keep throwing out all our fridges, all our washing machines. This is, mm. this is our planet. No, we should These be hanging on to them. are still working. If they work, OK, there must yeah. be a way of sorting it out. It's almost like they deliberately want us to be consuming new vehicles rather than make, making good make amendments. And there's no way to order. charge all the new electric vehicles anyway. And I well, know. don't even start with electric exactly. vehicles and the cost of the batteries exactly. and what it's going to... And the second health and value of, mm. of, 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 um, of electric cars. There is yeah. none, because the battery costs something like £20,000. They're normally clapped out within five years. Oh, don't. It's obviously a very emotive topic. You know, you've got to send your views in at home. And Do you want to see clarity on this? I think that's just what people want. Mm. Give us vote A and give us vote B rather than just being a uni party, right? That's my tuppence. OK, well, as if that wasn't controversial enough, yeah. should we talk about Brexit? Well, I'm, I'm so gonna sorry. Hand up to, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to Emma, in the mail well, on Sunday, they're saying, right, you voted for Brexit, now look what's yeah. happened. Mm. This is very much... we are apparently going to be treated much the same as when you go to the States. When you go to the EU countries, you're going to be fingerprinted and photograph taken of you and yeah. you'll have to yeah. provide all sorts of different ID. Is that a problem? Well, I'm going to hand over to Martin immediately. No, no, you, this is you, the headline. This is the headline. It's a shocker. To go to Europe, probably from next summer, we are going to need to have our finger, fingers printed, faces scanned. We're going to have to apply for a visa costing around seven euros, around six pounds, which may or may not be granted to us. We have to supply all sorts of personal information, criminal records, uh, information, all of that, where we're going to be staying, what's our purpose, to be absolutely monitored. There's going to be delays, chaos for ferries, lorry queues, that kind of thing. Um, and it's going to cost the economy millions. This is really... Well, it's revenge for Brexit. You've had to do that to go into America yeah, all really, our lives. And we've Europe. complained about no security in these countries. Now they're putting a bit of security in. Everybody's up in arms. I think it's a brilliant idea. So do I. I'm brilliant not idea. I love it.
Love well, it. I like going to America on holiday, mm. and I'm not bothered. And to you've talk got a queue for two hours to get through. Sometimes. Sometimes you have. Yeah. But what yeah. I would say um, is, wouldn't it be great if the European Union had this sort of security on their own borders, well. borders coming in from Africa or the Middle East, when, when we don't know who's coming into to the European landmass, and then we have freedom of movement within the entire 27 nation states. Then they end up in France. Then they come over the Channel to us, and no one has thought about fingerprinting or face scanning any of those people. But will this, ha but will this European but Martin, landmass? Will this happen? Now? Phone will away, this happen now then, Martin? Big one. Will this happen now then? It will happen because for, for twofold. First of all, they, they absolutely want to treat the UK as a third nation, an outside nation. We're, we're, on the same, we're in the same queue as like Afghanistan or the Middle East. They want there to be chaos at airports. They want to penalise us. They want Brexit to be tangibly disastrous so they can say, look, this will happen. I think I'm, I'm with you. It is a form of punishment. Having said that, we should be looking at security, and, we, and it mm. is good to know who is moving around. Unfortunately, it hammers tourists who go legitimately, and it doesn't stop people coming illegitimately to our country who don't even have a passport when they rock up. OK, that's another controversial issue. Mm. Let's go to Rishi Sunak's helicopter. Yes, he this went, is really annoying. He had to go 200 this. miles yeah, and yeah. he is being criticised yeah. for yeah. taking a helicopter. He's the Prime Minister of this country. It's a very powerful job. He needs every minute of every day to do things. He has a security. He has to be looked after because we live in a, a world now where people kill people and destroy people. And this helicopter and the, the world is frying. They never mention all the helicopters that are picking up the water mm. and spraying all the countries and the planes. I find this the most waste of space from page story ever. Speak I your think mind, it's Pete. Speak ridiculous. Your mind. Well, I agree with you because it's the mirror, so there we go. But I don't <laughs> see why. No, I think it's a culture in which you jump on a, on a, on a helicopter, you jump on a private jet. I, mm. don't, I, I really object to that. I object to being lectured by people like this who then take a private helicopter. He doesn't need that for security. So how is he supposed to get up there? Train? Um, there's no train, there's a strike. Well, so there we go. Sort out the strikes first and so. then tell us you can't travel, mate. <laughs> I don't want to be lectured by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle as they get come in on their private jet. I don't want to be lectured by people flying to, you know, not Davos, but those places where they have their wonderful climate change conferences and then leave by private jet. I'm sorry, it's a culture change. If we all need to clean up our act, they need to clean up their act. Well, it's a classic Such political... Such a wasteful, But, it, but it's, a, it's a classical political hit job. It's like, oh, on the one oh, hand, yes. I'm on the side of the motorist, on the other side, oh, I'm taking a chopper. But... How would you like our Prime Minister's time to be most efficiently spent? Do you want him he to be on a train? He can work on the train. He can have meetings on the train. Do you remember when Liz Truss took a, took a private jet to Australia and back, and it was something like half a million pounds, and I'm sick of it. There's, this is money that we need. This but is these money are your, we're talking every about people who are world leaders. should matter. Yeah, but, um, these are world, yeah. these are world leaders we're talking yeah. about. And? But why should I, I, I don't know whether I want to live in a country where we, we say that the Prime Minister has to go everywhere on a, on a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny how the Mirror are really angry about this, but they, they didn't even bat an eyelid when it, was, when it ex was exposed that Ursula von der Leyen, European Commissioner Chief, was taking jets 120 kilometres. So, look, they all do it. Yeah, they all do when it. I, when, I was it when, I, when I was in Argentina um, on, on holiday, I learned about the Prime Minister or the President who flew in by helicopter every Every day to the office and flew back because the, the chance of them getting killed was 99.9%. Mm, yes, it is there, yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, to me, he's the Prime Minister of this country. He's got a job and a half to do. It, get there, do the job and get back. Maybe if it was just the Prime Minister, but I, but I just feel it's every, you know, every minor cabinet minister's got private cars here, there and everywhere. And this is a lot of money being wasted. And when we're looking at budgets and when we're talking about cancer treatment and money for old people and money for the disabled and all of that, Let's look at the budget. Let's, let's trim back. Let's stop wasting hundreds of thousands of pounds on unnecessary nonsense like this. But also, how much are you going to uh, pay out on security if he went on the train, getting it sorted before he went, going underneath yeah. the train yeah. with yeah. the, the bomb? Be... How much is that going to cost? Well, there you are. That's given you plenty to think about, mm. hasn't it, this morning? Do get in touch with your views, because whilst uh, it's lovely to have Emma... Have you even had coffee yeah. yet? Yeah. We love your views. <laughs> well, you're allowed a coffee now. Yeah. You've earned it. Yeah. Thanks very much indeed.